Good morning, Corvette. Third member, rebuild duty. Going to add a new carrier. We're going to reshim the Eaton clutch stack. Um, I was going to show how these work, but this is your side gear. Comes on your axle. When these get loaded from the carrier pin, all the drive <clears throat> is on this pin here. Everything on this pin. So when this rotates, it wants to push and slide out and push against the clutches. You have these that are locked into here on your side gear. <clears throat> the other ones are in your carrier, locked in there and driven there. When they get squished together, that's how your posse works. So we saw some wear items. This is the pinion rear bearing cup. Almost failed on us. All right. So here's the 12V and 12P pinion. <clears throat> Difference. Um, this is what Tom did. Specialty gear set. And <clears throat> you will not find this in production any longer if I can find it. Where it says 12 Victor. You don't see that anymore. It's gone forever. Alright, let's stack her up and see what we got with the clutch stack. We have to shim it for the correct tightness. Right, we got our Eaton clutch pack put together without springs. What we're doing is checking the tension rotating drag on the clutches. And what we're going to do, instead of having springs in here continuously applying pressure and wearing them out every time you make a turn, we're going to preload it to about 40 pounds of drag with all these different shims. So now we uh, take it apart, put it together, check it about so a dozen times. we had on there was 50 thousandths. So we're going to take a 30 and a 25 and give it five more thousandths stack up. Make it five thousandths tighter on each side. We'll see how that goes. So we got 60 thousandths in each side. And that's about as tight as you want it. This tight? Yep. So we ran with 60 thousandths per side behind the pinions. I mean the side gears. Starting stages of setting up our backlash and preload. About six thousandths right now, but we need to adjust our shims for a proper bearing carrier preload. With the case pinion depth from thirty thousandths to twenty six thousandths, bringing it deeper. And this is our pattern. Kind of hard to tell, but yep. Looks good. That's the coast side. Here, take the light off for a second. Coast side. And the thrust side. Yeah, right on the side. ring side, we got 25 thousandths and 230 thousandths with this guy. Over here, we started off with 26 thousandths and we had this kind of shape where it was happy and it needed more pinion depth. But now, if you look over here, we have kind of hard to see but a sad face see the crown here it's kind of a sad face so there you go I like to use the analogy of this is a girl the pinion is the cock and when she's happy she wants more pinion depth so you come like this but then if you get too much cock she's unhappy and she has a sad face on the pattern <laughs> and that's what we got so now we're gonna split the difference and go about 30 thousandths. And then they'll say, well, you two perverts. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way how to remember this stupid pattern. You got this, 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 this. If you get the backlash right, all you need to worry about is pinion depth. And the patterns are pretty easy to figure out right there. And that's what we got. So this is with 35 thousandths. What we're running with 230 on the non-ring gear side. 25 thousandths on the ring gear side. That gave us six thousandths backlash. <clears throat> now we're gonna run with 26 thousand on the pinion spacing and the bearing. And our pattern is good with 26 thousandths. 
Now we're going to clean everything up and start final assembly. And our crush washer needs to come down 50 thousandths crush to get our running drag of 14 to 19 inch pounds. Here's our 40 inch three quarter breaker bar I just bought. And this worked really good for the crush washer. So this is how we tightened it. And then we're zero lash, then another maybe fifth of a turn. I'm gonna come over here with our inch torque. Go ahead and turn that. Go ahead and turn it, Joe. 19 inch pounds. Keep turning uh, it, keep nine. turning it. Yep. So we're good, there's our uh, preload. And then we'll take it back apart after we get our seal. We'll install our seal and then we'll get the new lock nut with green Loctite. And it should be good. Light film of green Loctite where these bearings, where the output side shafts come out through there. We've got this side installed. Nice little bearings. Got the seals installed. Come along pretty good. All right, got our shims in. Increased five here because we had ten thousandths, but now we have a uh, six. All right, so instead of twenty-five, we have thirty over here, and we still have two hundred thirty on that side. What do you think? All right, there's the one thousand horsepower Tom's setup. Got all new clutch clearances set in there. All new bearings. New carrier caps are 70. This is a half inch bolt over here with the billet cap. This is 100 foot pounds. All of these were double torqued to was it 50 or 55? I forget ARP specifications. But yeah, ready for they the don't cover. make the correct pinion seal anymore. I don't know why because it sticks out too far this way. If you look where it's been riding, right on the edge. So, what the trick is. Take a piece of eighth inch wire, or whatever, and put that around there. That way, when you hammer it onto here, it's nice and perpendicular, but it'll bring the seal surface in about an eighth of an inch. So it rides right there. So that's what we're going to do.